Hi everyone, welcome to this video on SIMV as a mode of mechanical ventilation. This is a video in the series of videos on modes of mechanical ventilation on our respiratory review page. So let's get talking about SIMV. It's one of those modes that's really not particularly well understood amongst the sort of general medical population. It's Most people seem to get assist control and they seem to get um, spontaneous ventilation or pressure supported ventilation but when it comes to SIMB it tends to cause some confusion so to to clear that confusion up we're going to do a little bit of a sort of a history lesson here so SIMV was originally just IMV so intermittent mandatory ventilation maybe we should write that um, let's pick a good color so um, intermittent mandatory ventilation okay IMV so the premise of IMV was that we set some mandatory breaths across the minute and you can see these here these blue boxes and these breaths so you can call them sort of scheduled breaths these are breaths that are, are going to happen across the minute and we talked about this in previous videos if we set a respiratory rate of 10 then these breaths are going to come every six seconds and that's going to come like clockwork they are mandatory breaths so the patient receives a breath every x number of seconds based on a respiratory rate we set okay that breath can be volume controlled or pressure controlled it, for the sake of this explanation it doesn't really matter um, and in between those breaths, the patient can breathe. They can breathe through the circuit. But those breaths are going to be spontaneous breaths. They're not going to receive any form of help from the ventilator on those breaths in between the mandatory breaths. So that doesn't sound too bad, right? That sounds like the patient can sort of do a little bit of breathing on their own and get some mandatory breaths as well so we can control their blood gases. So that sounds like it'd be a pretty reasonable thing to expect. But the problem with these spontaneous breaths in between these mandatory breaths is that they they don't receive any pressure support. And one of the big reasons we give pressure support is because if you, I'm I'm assuming most of you can't imagine what it's like to be intubated because you probably haven't been, but um, trying to breathe through a, a, a very narrow endotracheal tube um, ca causes quite a lot of resistance. It's quite difficult to breathe through an endotracheal tube. If you ever get the opportunity to, if you're in one of your ICUs, pull out a number seven or a number six and a half endotracheal tube, seal your lips around it and try and breathe through it for a minute and see how you get on. It's, it's pretty difficult. And adding to that, we've also got the whole length of the circuit of the ventilator to have to breathe through so that's it's it actually causes quite a lot of work of breathing so one of the problems with this and we're going to highlight these problems here oops i need to get a good color going let's get a red for problem okay so imv problem one with imv okay problem number one is that this no pressure support spontaneous breath causes a pretty big increase in the work of breathing okay it becomes pretty difficult to to breathe through the circuit the patient has to generate enough of a res sort of respiratory muscle effort to open a demand valve in the circuit so we can this is not super relevant but just just highlight the fact there's a demand valve they have to open okay needs to be opened Right? And then they have to breathe through all of that resistance of the, um, of the endotracheal tube. So endotracheal tube, ETT, equals increased airway resistance. Okay, So th that's a problem. These in-between breaths are, are quite uncomfortable, and it's not particularly easy to breathe from that um, to breathe them in because because of these things because of the demand valve and because of the resistance of the circuit okay that's the first problem the second problem we have highlighted over here and that is that there really isn't any coordination between the mandatory breaths in IMV and the spontaneous breaths that the patient can take in between so you can see for example here that the pre these little yellow X's are that's denoting where the patient has triggered a breath has made an effort to take a breath right and then they have this small yellow little uh, spontaneous breath here 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 and over here but you can see here that they've they've tried to take this spontaneous breath really close to where this mandatory breath was about to come in right these are scheduled breaths so this was going to come in whatever happens right this is on a schedule this breath is coming in whatever's going to happen right so when this when the patient tries to take a spontaneous breath right before that 
they end up getting a mandatory breath on top of their uh, spontaneous breath, right? And that's called breath stacking. So this is problem two. Okay, problem two is that you have this breath stacking. There's no, there's no interaction between the the ventilator and the patient when it comes to coordinating these spontaneous breaths with these mandatory breaths. So how does SINV fix that? Well, it fixes both of those problems, which is why it's called this synchronized SINV, right? Synchronized IMV. So let's just get a different color here. And this is synchronized. So how is it synchronized? Let's let's figure that out here. So we can see here that we still have our set mandatory breaths coming in on a schedule throughout the minute, okay? And these mandatory breaths can be volume controlled, which would make them flow limited and volume cycled, like we've already learned, or they can be pressure controlled, which means they're pressure limited and time cycled, as we've already learned. But these breaths in the middle here, these breaths in between those other breaths, are now going to receive pressure support. So instead of just the patient being on their own to breathe through all of this resistance and all of these demand valve openings and breathing through these tiny endotracheal tubes, instead of being left to their own devices to that, we give them pressure support, okay? So pressure support acts to decrease the work of breathing, okay? And that increases the patient's comfort. All right, so that also allows them to take these breaths that are slightly bigger breaths that aren't as difficult to pull in and will generally um, create a better ventil ventilation. They'll establish a better tidal volume when they're, uh, when they're taking these breaths, okay? Now we'll get to the point down here where they, the patient took the breath really close to where the mandatory breath was about to come in. So what happens in SIMV? How do we fix that? So what the ventilator does is it says, oh, this patient's just triggered a breath right here but it recognizes that there's about to be a mandatory breath here. It says, oh, well, we've got a mandatory breath coming up in about half a second or whatever this period of time is. So why don't we just shift that mandatory breath back to, to here and the patient can just have it a little bit early, okay? So this is patient gets mandatory breath, and I'm going to put this in inverted commas just so I'm going to explain that in a second. Mandatory breath early, right? We just shift this breath across and allow the patient to have it a little bit early. But in, or in doing that, in having this breath triggered by the patient, it's no longer a mandatory breath. This is now defined as an assisted breath, right? It's triggered by the patient, but it's the same as the mandatory breaths, okay? Hopefully that makes sense. All we've done is just shifted that breath earlier so the patient can have it early. So they don't have to, so that this doesn't happen. So that it, it, it tends to sort of reduce the amount of breath stacking that you're having because you're not having a spontaneous breath then superimposed with a mandatory breath, okay? So they get this assisted breath. So what you might notice from this is that when we did our first videos a while back and we talked about different types of breath, we talked about uh, mandatory breaths, right? These can sometimes be called controlled breaths. We talked about assisted breaths, and we talked about spontaneous breaths. Now this is where we, we kind of, because these spontaneous breaths don't really exist in mechanical ventilation anymore, we don't like people to breathe with no help at all from the ventilator because, it's, it, because of these factors. This spontaneous breath is now spontaneous or pressure supported breath. Okay, so you can see in IMV, sorry, in SIMV that we tend we have all three of these breath types. Okay, so what what that sort of leads to is this was referred to as sort of partial ventilatory support. What we used to do with IMV is we'd drop the rate of these mandatory breaths down so they came in less frequently and then allowed the patient to breathe spontaneously in between. And the weaning process was just reducing these the, the frequency of these ma mandatory breaths. SIMV is used in a similar way. We reduce the frequency of these mandatory breaths, allowing them to breathe with pressure support more. Um, but it's it's definitely an improvement from IMV. However, when when it comes to sort of weaning from ventilation, which was really kind of what they wanted to do with this, they wanted to gradually decrease the number of mandatory breaths to, to sort of wean them off that ventilatory support. But a lot of the literature that's out there, and, and, and I'll post a couple of the, the bigger trials in the um, in the comments section there, that some of the hallmark trials on, on SIMV versus pressure support versus anything else for weaning from ventilation. Those trials did find out that 
SIMB increases the number of weaning failures. Weaning failure as when compared to pressure support ventilation. We have a video on pressure support ventilation, which we've, I've recently posted if, if you guys want to check that out. So that was the first thing that the sort of literature tells us. The second thing is that SIMV is actually slower, slower at weaning compared to um, versus pressure support ventilation or versus TP's trials. And we haven't talked about TP's trials, but we, we will eventually. That's basically just when we let usually a trach patient breathe off the ventilator entirely for short periods of time and then put them back on the vent to rest them. So so this is that's really the sort of crux of SIMV. You should really now be able to understand how the mode operates, why it's called synchronized IMV versus just IMV, and that's because of this moving or getting breaths early if the patient needs them. The, diff the big difference is, is that there's pressure support in the breaths in between the mandatory breaths, whereas in IMV there isn't, and it utilizes all three breath types. So how much this is utilized nowadays, uh, it's hard to say. It's going to be very in, uh, institution dependent. Um, we don't tend to use it a huge amount at our institution, but hopefully this gives you a little bit of an idea of what SIMV is and sort of where it came from.